I'm Angela Sharp and welcome to The Daily Mix. I have to start with a little bit of sad news. Of course, by now you heard that Cardinals Hall of Famer Lou Brock has passed away at 81 years old. But what a career. You know, it's so amazing talking to Cardinals fans and sports fans in general. Even the people that weren't able to see him play still know who he is and loved everything about him. You know, he was really known for the, stealing those bases. And I actually saw an interview once where they asked Lou if he could steal on Yachty. And they asked Yachty if he could throw out Lou. And they both had the same answer at the same time. Depends on the pitcher. So I just thought that was kind of fun. Um, I actually did something with Lou Brock uh, many, many years ago, and he was just such a nice man. So it is always sad to see some of your heroes go, and I know Cardinals fans are very disappointed in that loss. All right, you guys know that I love the Great Forest Park Balloon Race. It is one of my all-time favorite events here in St. Louis, and of course, we're not having it this year. But this week, they are gonna be sending up kind of those first responders and our healthcare heroes up in solo flights throughout the week. Um, they're not really announcing where the flights are going up from, probably to make sure that you don't go and chase them like I used to do with my dad every year during the Great Forest Park balloon race. But you should probably keep your eye on the sky because even though we aren't having a Great Forest Park balloon race, it is still pretty awesome to see hot air balloons in the sky and it makes me smile. And you know, since I'm kind of on a roll of doubter news and complaining about things, my favorite event that happens in Nashville is the CMA's, Country Music's biggest night, of course. And I've been going, gosh, I don't even know how many years I've been going, but I've been going every year. The last, I would say like six or seven, I've really lucked out sitting front row or second row or third row, up with all the stars. Guess what, guys? No random people this year. No audience, no random seat fillers, basically just the artists and the people they need to put on the show will be there this year. That happens in November. I'm really bummed out about that. That is kind of my ladies night. Me and uh, actually two women that I met on a street corner out in Nashville. We now always go and share a room and kind of make it a, a fun weekend of CMA parties and fun. And we can't do that because of COVID. But you know, earlier I mentioned the entertainer of the year situation. So Garth Brooks had asked to be not included as entertainer of the year, but we didn't know what was gonna happen with that because they could have still voted him in because just because you say, I don't want to do it, doesn't mean you don't get to do it. Well, they did not vote him in. So this year's nominees for entertainer of the year are Eric Church, Carrie Underwood, Miranda Lambert, Keith Urban, and if you ask me who got Garth's spot, Luke Combs. There's a lot of chatter on Twitter about Luke Combs winning that award, but that would be just plain silly. It's either Carrie Underwoods or Eric Church, and you guys know that I yelled two years ago it should be Eric Church, so that's who I think. Later on in the show, I'm gonna tell you something you can do that's still operational that you can still go see. It is called Sky Wars. It's the 15th annual fireworks championship. That's right, they have a championship for fireworks displays set to music, and my buddy Rob is gonna be on later in the show to tell us all about it. So I think it's time to get started. Let's get started on today's Daily Mix. By now, you have heard the news. You know, St. Louis Blues, they love a goalie controversy, and they have now taken that away from you. Jake Allen was traded to the Montreal Canadiens. Jake Allen has spent his whole career here with the St. Louis Blues, and he had quite a run. It was him and Elliott for a while, and some people thought Elliott should have started in that last playoff game. Some people would have been right. And then, of course, he got the number one job, that was taken from him by Bennington during the Stanley Cup. But Jake Allen still got to raise the Stanley Cup and, you know, put on quite a show. He had quite a good, successful career here, even if he might have been the backup or the first guy. We don't know. It's a goalie controversy. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But this is clearly just to make room on that salary cap so they can try to sign back Captain Alex Petrangelo. So it'll be interesting to see if they're able to do that or not. But, you know, if there's any hockey news, I always have to share it with you because, hey, let's go Blues. 
Now, Dancing with the Stars returns this week. I have never watched Dancing with the Stars. I'm gonna watch this week. Because St. Louis's very own Nelly is gonna be in the mix of celebrities. How exciting is that? I know I know Nelly can dance, because I've seen him like actually dance, but ballroom dancing feels like it would be a whole different thing. So it might be interesting to see Nelly trying to ballroom dance. I just hope he does to some of his songs. So he's gonna be competing against actors and athletes and other public figures, including NBA star Charles Oakley, figure skater Johnny Weir, and Carol Baskin from Netflix's The Tiger King. I've never, ever, ever seen that show, but I did note on my social media, people that weren't from St. Louis were most excited about her. People that were from St. Louis were most excited, of course, about Nelly. So I think that's pretty exciting. Now you can catch Dancing with the Stars on Mondays at 7 p.m. If you've been thinking about investing in our solar power to make your home more efficient, but you aren't sure where to start, one of these programs may be for you. I'm talking about Grow Solar STL and Grow Solar Metro East. These programs help residents save resources, conserve energy, and reduce long-term energy costs. They also offer free educational sessions and volume pricing all with the goal of bringing the Gateway region together to lower the price of solar while increasing clean energy. The deadline to participate in the 2020 program, which includes a guaranteed 2020 installation or a 4% rebate, is September 30th. So that's coming up quick. You can learn more about the Grow Solar programs at growsolarstl.org and growsolarmetroeast.org. Members of the Missouri House and Senate have approved a bill to lift the res residency requirement for the City of St. Louis Police, Fire, and EMS, allowing them to live outside of the city. In a statement, Mayor Lida Krusen said in part, this is a positive step forward, leveling the playing field, and allowing us to be more competitive in hiring, retraining, and recruiting public safety employees from a larger geographic area. The city's police department currently has a shortage of more than 140 officers. The new measure will go into effect once it's been signed by Governor Parsons. Since the big announcement of revealing the St. Louis City SC's team name, Crest and Colors, fans have been asking, when can they get their season tickets? Well, now you have an answer. Starting September 16th, soccer fans can place a deposit to reserve their place in line to purchase available season tickets for the team's inaugural season in 2023. I know 2023 sounds like it's so far away, but St. Louis has such a huge group of soccer fans that people just really wanna know how they can be a part of it, and so here's how. Now there's gonna be four separate groups of season ticket deposits, and the sooner a fan places their deposit, the sooner they'll be able to select their seat location when that time comes. So obviously, if you want the best seat, you gotta get in there early. To learn more about the season ticket deposits, visit stlcitysc.com. Now this summer, I was able to visit the Gateway Arch after they began phase one of the reopening, and I actually loved it. I hadn't been there since they kind of redid the arch and made it all fancy, but it was a lot of fun to see all the different displays and kind of just check out the, the newly remodeled arch. One of the things I didn't get to do while I was there was to take a tram to the top. But guess what? Now you can. They recently entered phase two of the reopening of the park, and that includes the tram ride to the top. Now, just like with the Arch Visitor Center and Museum, there are some modifications in place, like reduced capacity, so you will need to make a reservation and get your tickets ahead of time. You can do that by visiting gatewayarch.com or calling the number on your screen. Now, I love, just love, that more things and our favorite things are coming back like they are at the Arch, and hopefully will be a return of Fair St. Louis next summer. That, of course, was canceled this year due to the pandemic. And if you're like me, then you probably really miss the fireworks too. But I have some good news. There's a really awesome fireworks competition coming up later this month, and my guest today is gonna tell us all about it. But first, I need you to take a look at this.
All right, we just saw that awesome video of all those great fireworks, and now I'm joined by Rob Asima from Sky Wars. Now, I have to tell you, Rob, up until we booked you to come on the Daily Mix, I had not heard about this before, but this is going strong. The 15th annual one, right? 15th uh, year in a row. We're one of the, the only pyro musical competitions in the United States, and it's right here in the St. Louis area. Oh my goodness, that is so exciting. So what gets someone started in competing in whatever you just said, pyro? Pyro music, musical, pyro. fireworks. Yeah. It's basically, for me anyway, it's a fireworks hobby gone bad. At least that's what my wife says. <laughs> a fireworks hobby gone bad. So you guys invite kind of the best, what do we call them, fire workers from around the world. Yeah. To yeah. Kind of choreographers, you might call them. A choreographers, that's even better. To put up a fireworks I'm gonna call it spectacular. Right, yeah, most people have never seen a true pyro musical. A lot of people have seen fireworks playing with music, but these are choreographed down to the hundredth of a second so that the effects go at the exact beats of the music, and, and it's something else if you've never seen it. I mean, this sounds crazy, amazingly fun, and what I'm also excited about is that you guys are still um, selling tickets so that people can come and actually experience this, especially right now in a time where so much has right. been canceled and taken away. So I feel like that's huge. Yeah, we're outside, we're in a big field. There'll be plenty of room to spread out. And uh, and yeah, we're still selling tickets right now at skywarsevent.com. So this is a championship. So was there stuff leaning up into this? It's an invitational. So there's no bracket or anything like there would be in the in basketball. But we, uh, you know, we sort of know, as you can imagine, the fireworks community is not that big of a, of a group around the U.S. And so we sort of know who the best uh, um, choreographers are and, and we invite them to come show their skills off and compete for mostly bragging rights. But uh, but the public gets to benefit from it. Well, absolutely. I mean, this sounds so excited for, for somebody like me who's never been before yeah. and maybe and doesn't know much about it. What can the person expect who buys a ticket and comes to the show? Yeah, so this is a two hour long event and you'll see uh, 10 different displays through the course of the evening. First part of the show is what we call our competition show. So we take, you could think of it like auto stock car racing. You know, with those stock cars, they give everybody the exact same car. So what we do is we, we put a bunch of limits on the, on the contestants. We say you can only shoot so many fireworks. It has to be mostly stuff that you could buy in a tent. So a lot of the stuff that you'll see in the first portion of the show is stuff that in theory you could go buy yourself. Uh, we say it can only be a certain uh, amount of time and you can only have a certain number of, it's a, called a, an electrical match. So when we hook up to these electric firing systems, it's a, a wire with a match head on the end that actually shoots the fireworks. Uh, and so we think what's left is just how good are you at designing, choreographing and executing a show. So that's the first part. Uh, then you'll see what we call the unlimited show. So we put a lot of limits on them at the beginning. And then for the second part, the unlimited, we take the limits off and just say, use as many fireworks as you'd like. And typically they like to use a lot. So uh, so that's a big, a big portion of the show. And then the last part of the show is our professional division. So this is the big stuff. We're gonna have uh, up to 12 inch shells. That's uh, probably the largest shells that'll be shot in North America this year. And uh, so we'll have three of those. And then of course our signature gasoline fireballs. We have the fireball dudes from Memphis who hold the world record for the largest gasoline fireball. And he'll be doing a little something he calls the super nuke, which is 500 gallons of gasoline. It makes about a 300 foot high fireball for you. It's something to see. That's probably the crowd favorite usually. I mean, it sounds amazing, but then a part of me was like, okay, now I'm scared. <laughs> fireball running around. <laughs> well, they're they're well away from the audience. So well enough that you can feel a little of the heat and enjoy it, but completely safe. I love it. So when people come, are there going to be like food trucks around, um, that kind of thing, or should they yeah. bring phone, or how does that work? Yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have food trucks. We'll have uh, uh, beverages. There's a kids area that starts at two in the afternoon, so you can come out and make a day of it. And then the the main event starts at seven thirty, right about the time it gets dark right around when it starts getting dark. And you guys are right there in Wright City. So you're not very far from the St. Louis area for people to come travel. What was it like last year when you did the show? Well, it was uh, it was amazing. You know, we had uh, we had people packed in a little closer last year than we'll have them this year. We're in a little bigger uh, space. And so we'll have room to spread out. But 
you know, the uh, there's just something about seeing fireworks set the music just like this, and uh, and to hear the the audience's reaction to it, it's, it really is like nothing you've ever seen. You know, I was just I'm gonna say complaining because I kind of missed out on you know my typical Fourth of July weekend with my, right. my family. So this is kind of a way that people can go and kind of experience a little bit of Fourth of July fun. That's right. T time's about a hundred, because one of the things we always say about pyromania is that it's going to ruin your Fourth of July fireworks. For you. Um, and you, um, you, we don't apologize for that. I, I, this is wonderful. This sounds like so much fun. I'm probably going to have to check it out. I can't believe I hadn't heard of it before. So this is the 15th annual Sky Wars Championship competition that is coming up. And tell, tell us all the details. When is it coming up? When should I buy my tickets? How can we get in touch? September 26th, best place to get your tickets is skywarsevent.com on our website. And all the details are there. You can buy them right there. I love that. Now, after you buy those tickets, because you're probably going to buy those fast, because like you said, they're social distancing. Right. So after you buy those tickets, make sure you check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. You can drop us a line at The Daily Mix at stltv.net. We want to hear from you. That's going to do it for The Daily Mix. We keep it right here on STL TV and Experience St. Louis.